هسته اولیه این کتابخانه در شهر نجف The initial core of this library was formed in Najaf when he was learning and teaching there because he was born into a scholastic family and his ancestors were great people who possessed small libraries. Upon the deaths of his grandfather and father, inherited a number of books. One day, he was walking in the market of Najaf when he saw some clergymen enter a caravansaray. He asked what was going on, and they answered that it was a place where the heirs of great scholars auctioned off the manuscripts of their deceased fathers. He entered enthusiastically. He saw that it was indeed an auction, and the highest bidders were awarded the books on the block. It appeared that all the manuscripts were going to a broker named Kazem. My father asked who that person was and whether or not he was a clergyman. They told him that the man in question was buying the books for the British consulate and he went to the auction once a week. One of his services to the Shiite world was building the great library. First he established this library and collected the books with much difficulty. It's said that he performed something called rental worship. In other words, people gave him money and he prayed and fasted in proxy for them. With the money he earned this way, he bought splendid books, which he found in different places. Now his library is one of the top-ranking libraries in the Shiite world. Considering the library of the late Ayatollah Najafi Marashi, you know that great scholars really believed in cultural movements in society. The library of Allama Amini in Najaf, the library of Sayyid Mohsen Amin in Lebanon, the library of the late Sayyid Sharaf Din in Lebanon, the libraries of the theological schools in Najaf, the library of the Faizia school, the library of Hojatiyya, the library of the holy shrine of Hazrat Masumeh, and the library of the late Ayatollah Gulpaigani are all good, but the library of Najafi Marashi is outstanding, and no library in Qom or in any other places can hold a candle to it. The Encyclopedia of the World's Libraries Unit is one of the scholarly research units of the large library of Ayatollah Najafi Marashi. This unit was established in 1370 according to the Islamic solar calendar. Its purpose is to introduce the rich culture of Islam to the world especially the Muslim world, and to revive this great civilization. Islam places great importance on books and reading as the first message of revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his, and his progeny was Iqra, which means read. In the past, books were seldom kept in good conditions. Natural factors such as floods and pests, along with wars and conflicts, have destroyed some books. Sometimes due to the inefficiency of Muslim governors and undue wars, books were burnt or destroyed. 
However, these books are available in some libraries in Iran and abroad and are referred to by researchers and authors. The Encyclopedia of the World's Libraries, which is being compiled now, aims to give the addresses of these libraries to the Iranian and foreign researchers so that they can conduct researches about Islam. They need books which may be available in just one library. First, we introduce the library and then, if a unique book exists there, we introduce it too, so that a person who needs it or needs to make a copy of the book and print it can be made aware of such a book. A very splendid copy of the Quran on goatskin belonging to the first half of the second century AH, which was written in East Africa. A beautiful text without vowels and with detailed diacritical marks. Evolution of Quranic calligraphy during the history of printing this valuable divine command dates back to the time when Kufic calligraphy gave way to Nasran souls. In the 3rd century AH, Ibn Muqalla pioneered Nasr calligraphy and Ibn Bawab, whose Quranic writing dates back to 392 AH, continued to develop this beautiful calligraphy. The 4th, 5th, and 6th centuries AH mark the apex of Quranic calligraphy. Exegesis of the Quran and the translation of it into Persian in Sol's Rehan calligraphy by Baysan Quli are among the eye-catching examples of this era. Ayatollah Najafi asked himself, are we not Shiites and Muslims? These books belong to Shiites and their scholars, so why should Christians take possession of them? He wondered whether by doing this the British were attempting to rob the Shiites of the culture and science or if perhaps they were attempting to destroy the works of Shiite scholars and associate them with Safavid period and the times succeeding it. In this way, Ayatollah Marashin Najafi, who was a simple seminary student with low income and limited facilities, decided to forgo one meal a day and work in a rice mill, along with his studying in order to purchase some of the books being auctioned, and in doing so, launch a huge movement. When he was a child, in order to wake his father, he would rub his cheeks and work on down to the soles of his feet in order to await shaking the man. And he used to kiss his father's face until he finally got up. When his father saw such politeness in his son, he would pray for him. مرحوم آیت الله عزما حاجسید شهاب الدین نجفی مرعشی The late Ayatollah Haj Sayyid Shahabuddin Marashi Najafi was one of the greatest scholars and religious authorities of this century. He had a personality 
which you couldn't find in other great people. One aspect of his personality was his deep knowledge, which spanned a wide range of information and could be seen in few other people. Whatever questions you asked him about any technique, he could give you some information and recommend certain books about. The second aspect of his personality was his reverence and tendency to refer to the prophets and exemplary persons, especially the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his progeny. He always preached sermons. He visited the shrine of Hazrat Masuma every day. Sometimes he stood before the shrine for a couple of hours before dawn. Sometimes when he went there, he wore a hooded cloak so that no one would recognize him. The third aspect was his relationship with people. I've never seen any religious authorities so ready to help people and answer their questions. He sat in a small room not far from his courtyard. Whoever sought him, man or woman, young or old, villager or ebonite, could meet him in person. People told him their problems, even sometimes their personal and familiar problems. Anyway, it was important. He once told me that death was like a wedding for him. When the encyclopedia is published, it will be translated to Arabic first and then to English. Moreover, we also intend to compile a guidebook of the world's libraries, which will be published in the same languages. This will include the world's libraries, especially the Islamic libraries, which are not mentioned very often ex in existing guidebooks. We also consider the libraries which no longer exist, such as the Beit al library in Baghdad, or the Darul El Fatimiyun in Egypt. It's a magnificent uh, library and uh, it has been extremely interesting to uh, see all these very valuable um, docu uh, manuscripts and documents exposed here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a treasure. I would, uh, it's a treasure of Iran and it's uh, uh, a treasure of uh, the Islamic world, but also 
for uh, every country. Uh, this is a very, very important collection. Interestingly, the library of Mr. Marashi is famous for its manuscripts and stone printed books, and the number of these books the library possesses, along with its journals, make it outstanding. It has 177 different titles from the first 150 years of Persian journalism. No other library in Iran or elsewhere has such a wide number of Persian journals. Sixteen of these titles were published abroad and the rest were published in Iran. و بقیه انوان ها نشریات چاپ ایران است. I, I, I think it is it's very important also symbolically that you keep the manuscripts from different religion, religions, world religions side by side. It's it's a sign of tolerance and uh, it is uh, an uh, impetus uh, that uh, this tolerance should be also carried out in practice. Not only manuscripts side by side, but also, but also uh, people being uh, tolerated uh, to uh, practice their religions freely side by side as imtiyazat in kitabkhani ki dar zaman khudaatullah marashi najavi a number of anti-Zionist Jews have visited the library and looked at the manuscripts. When they came across the manuscript written in Hebrew, they were surprised. They told us that they had previously thought we had burned their books after Islamic revolution. But now they see that we keep them in top conditions along with our own books. The books which are bought by or donated to this library are classified by Dr. Mahmoud Marashi. He writes the priorities of the books and assigns each a number in which it should be catalogued and researched. When the books are numbered, stored in groups of 400 each. Then they are sorted with the help of our colleagues and are sent to research. Some of the books sent to this center have a title, a name of the author and date. We make notes on these books regarding the title the name of the author and the date each work was begun and finished for future points of reference. However, some books are devoid of any such information. Sometimes even the beginning and end of the book are unavailable. Nevertheless, the book will be researched because of its importance. It may take two weeks to identify it by means of similar manuscripts or reference books and guidebooks. Of course, our experience helps us too, and the subject, time and language of the book narrows down the research. Finally, such information as is available, such as the sources we used, will be duly noted on such works.